Good morning. I'm Jeff Salyers, a professor of practice. So some familiar faces here. Uh, at Tulane in the marketing area, I, I've been te I teach sports marketing. Uh, the first class has kind of been a part of this program. Um, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, the certificate programs, and then I'm going to talk to you about the sports industry in general. Right? Why why does it make sense to be a part of these sports uh, or these certificate programs? So uh, the dean uh, talked about the, the four areas, energy, hospitality, real estate, finance, and saving the best for last, obviously, sports management. Uh, what I'm excited about and, and excited to be a part of this, right, uh, to me, these are very industry specific and, and really focused on setting you up for success in an industry that you're excited about, right? And I think these are all kind of very relevant and growing industries. So it's a broad swath of skill sets focused within that, that industry, and, and it's supplemented by experiential learning opportunities. I'm gonna talk about the one that we'll be doing later this semester in sports marketing. She met Justin yesterday out getting ready for that, that opportunity. Uh, and, and so really the selling points on these undergraduate certificate programs um, specialized skill development, right? Taking you from the broad theory of an area to, I'm interested in this industry, what skills am I going to need and how can I acquire those? Uh, career advancement opportunities, industry recognition. And then something I think is, is really nice about how these are built. These are four classes. So it's, it's 60 hours of instruction, right? Not a, a small amount to, to focus on any one subject. But if you think about, we have getting to know lots of undergraduate students over the last few years, right? we have double majors, we have people that have a lot of ambition in what they want to do at their time here in Tulane. And I think four classes, like you said, is, is 60 plus hours of instruction um, or credit hours, I should say, uh, but, but really uh, enough to fit into a lot of folks' schedules. So that flexibility and time efficiency, I think, makes these very consumable, very accessible uh, to, to a lot of uh, undergraduate students. So I'm excited to be a part of those. I'm gonna talk, why we're here today more specifically uh, about sports management. Uh, we know sports, a global business, right? All cultures play and consume uh, sports. It's large, it's diverse. And a lot of people, right, we think of sports, we think of game day, event day, match day, right? and you have ticketing, you have event management, you have hospitality, um, you know, you're putting on the show, right? Making the product. Uh, but it's so much more than that, right? When we think of the major red revenue stream for many leagues and teams, it's packaging that content and producing it and distributing it through a, a partner. The media landscape uh, is very rapidly changing as well, uh, but has been a driver of a lot of the growth that we're seeing in the sports industry. Sponsorships, right? We think of sports marketing a lot of times from the team, the athlete, the league, but there are a lot of corporations are in the business of marketing through sports, finding a way to connect with their consumer um, through uh, the affiliation, the affinity that that consumer has uh, for an event, for a sports team, for an athlete. And then there's this kind of emerging world from a revenue stream standpoint. Uh, we know sports gambling has become legal in many states, including Louisiana. Uh, digital assets, kind of the intersection of, of fantasy and then um, bringing that to life in different ways uh, in, a, in a digital environment. And these revenue streams as technology involves are all going to become more dynamic and grow as well. So I told you it was a growth industry, um, but you know I like to prove my point. Uh, so as an asset class, if you want to think of professional sports franchises as that, greatly outpacing across leagues, across sports, uh, the S&P 500 over the last decade, right? In, in very dramatic ways, really. Um, so we have all this growth. When you have something, a set of assets growing like this, investment comes, right? More people want in on the good times. That investment demands greater sophistication, right? They're gonna have higher return ideas, different management ideas, and, and that's, that sophistication, right, is what we want to prepare our students for. And these are just a few examples, right? But that's we see that sophistication through how do I leverage my asset of the real estate, the game day experience? What can that look like? Or like I said, the, the fragmented nature of content. How can we best take advantage of that? How can we stay on top of where fans want to consume media and, and content from a team? So we have a growth industry. We have more capital. We have more investment. We have greater expectations, right? This requires skilled leaders. And it takes me to something that I'm really passionate about, uh, which is experiential learning. Training students via hands-on opportunities. And, and I can't thank Justin, I can't thank 
um, some other individuals that have just been really generous in the Pelicans and Saints organization with their time. I was actually talking to, to one of those individuals in the fall, right, just preparing for this class, uh, works in, in corporate partnerships with the Pelicans and the Saints. And I asked, hey, we want to do things that are, you're thinking about right now, right? We want to expose our students to the problems that you're working through, right? And immediately his mind went to uh, our local media rights, what we call regional sports networks. And I'm not going to go into the details on it, but what was over the last few decades, a, a fairly stable and consistent and, and fairly large source of revenue for not just the Pelicans, but for all really Major League Baseball, NHL and NBA franchises is in turmoil, right? And, and it's really based on how all of us here are consuming media, right? We're subscribing to Cable West. Those fees that came along with it were kind of the backbone of this business model. So while live sports consumption on TV is, is doing very well, there's a, kind of this hopefully intermediate problem of where do we go if this business model doesn't kind of come out of bankruptcy and, and, and solve some of its problems. And based on our media consumption, it's, you know, that, that's certainly a real risk. And so I was at the St. Pelicans offices yesterday, I interviewed three uh, marketing professionals from three different areas, uh, ticket sales, uh, from sponsorship as well, from kind of content and media, all getting their perspective on this issue, right? We're going to edit that and share it with our students. Uh, so they're facing and tackling the same problems that industry professor, professionals are, and they're getting the same insight from those industry professionals. So in groups, students are going to present back their solutions. We're going to share those back with the Saints in Pelican. So really excited uh, to, to see all the students' great ideas on this subject. And that's really the crux of what we're trying to accomplish with these uh, certificate programs, right? Practical skill development, thoughtfully designed courses that facilitate experiential learning, right? Access to industry professionals. And if we do those first two things, right? If we're building skill sets and, and you're having opportunities to network, be exposed near and far to industry professionals, access to opportunities is a logical next step, right? And, and we want our students to be job ready and, and people banging down the door, right? To get in. Uh, and have access uh, to those skill sets. Um, I was talking to, to Justin and, and Arthur about kind of my professional background. I, I worked for the Charlotte Hornets way back when they were the Charlotte Bobcats. Uh, and since then, I've had a lot of opportunity to market other things like consumer packaged goods. And, and one thing I remember from my days in, in uh, with a, a sports franchise marketing, uh, the event, the experience, and that's kind of come back as I've interacted with my sports marketing students, right? Uh, that I think is so neat. A, a lot of our, our marketing students gave, you know, I'm taking this class because I really like sports, right? And a lot of us who worked in sports probably started that way. But having time and having marketed a wide breadth of services and products, what really excites me about sports marketing is what you get to share, right? You're sharing uh, an emotional experience, something that brings people together, family, friends, and sometimes strangers. And, and that connection is just a really neat product, right? If you think of what am I going to go to work every day and share with the world and share with my consumer? The, the emotional aspect, the connecting aspect of sports, I think, is just a really powerful product to be a part of. So uh, I'm really excited to be a part of this program uh, and look forward to, uh, I know some of you meeting uh, all of the, the interested students over uh, the next couple of semesters. Next up, the real industry expert here. <laughs> Justin? Thanks, Jeff. I think you're uh, giving me a little too much credit, but <laughs> appreciate it all the same. Everyone doing all right today? Um, there we go. Um, so appreciate you guys all taking the time today. Uh, my name is Justin Baldinger. I am the Director of Corporate Partnership Sales and Strategy with the New Orleans Saints and Pelicans. Um, so, you know, Jeff mentioned what's going on in the industry in such a wide ranging aspect of what we do. And, you know, excited to give a little bit of a deeper dive on what we do in the partnership space, but also kind of offer some broad, wide-ranging advice on why working in sports in general is, is great. So quick uh, background on me. I'm from Long Island, New York originally. Um, don't hold that against me. Um, graduate of Ohio University. Um, they are known academically for two programs. They're known for their journalism program and they're known for their sports MBA. Um, go figure, I'm actually a journalism major. So it's funny how the path can kind of take you some funny ways. Um, but was using that journalism degree from a professional perspective, first couple of years out of college, um, living back in New York, and um, was 
not was doing some of the coolest things I've ever done um, and making virtually no money to do it living in New York City. So that was uh, that was challenging. Wanted to find something that gave me an opportunity to leverage something I was passionate about and also just make a living wage, um, which led me into the sales space. I was in media sales for three years um, selling radio, television events um, to um, companies like the ones that Jeff used to work for. Um, I found half of that, um, you know, it's an opportunity to make money, find something I'm good at, which was sales, um, but wasn't quite clicking from a passion perspective. And that's what led me to my, with the team side of my career um, with Columbus Blue Jackets um, starting out. And that's when things truly clicked for me. It gave me more tools in my tool belt. It allowed me to leverage relationships and just created for, you know, when I got there, probably six months in, I'm like, oh, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. I say all that to say that that was, I was 27 when I started the Blue Jackets. So, um, you know, it's okay to be in the process of figuring this out right now as you guys are in the seats you guys are in. So I was with the Blue Jackets for, for five and a half years in the NHL. Um, wanted to take the next step in my career. So I was with the Jacksonville Jaguars, uh, jumping into the NFL, trying out a new market, and now been here um, both in the market and with the Saints and Pelicans for the last six months. So it's been great. Um, this is my first time in a leadership role. So I'm managing a team of new business partnership salespeople. So it's a little background on me. Um, corporate partnership. So Jeffrey spoke to a little bit about, it, but I guess I'll open it up to you guys. Do you guys know what corporate partnerships are? I guess in broad strokes. Um, all right, I'll 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 kind of give you the quick uh, the quick rundown because people, there's kind of that what people think we do and what we actually do. But long story short, anytime there's a business, a business involved with the team where they're marketing themselves. So a lot of people think first and foremost, you walk into the Superdome or you work in, walk into the Smoothie King Center, you see a bunch of signs and, and LED ribbons and that sort of thing where there's a business aligned. But that also extends out to what we're doing from a social media content perspective, from a community relations perspective, television spots, radio spots, really anywhere where a business is aligning with the team, um, there's a good chance that, that our group was involved in that. Um, so that's what we do. Um, and it's good to kind of have that in my back pocket because there's a lot of what we, what people think we do, which, you know, if you ask my mother, she still thinks uh, 10 years into this that I sell tickets still, um, <laughs> which I, I do as part of deals, but I, that she thinks I, I sell tickets. Um, and then the other word that gets used a lot is advertising, which is what I did previously and to a degree what we do, but it goes well beyond that. We really are in the business, as Jeff alluded to, of telling brand stories, you know, um, finding out what's important to brands locally, regionally, nationally, and helping tell a story in a place where people are passionate because, you know, people buy or companies buy television spots, they buy radio spots, they buy billboards. That's advertising. But to be able to tell your brand promise and share what you're about in a place where people are excited, passionate is, is really unique. And that's what we're in the business of doing. So um, it also gives me an opportunity to become a mini expert in so many things. Um, I'm going to throw a bunch of word salad out here, but I've done partnerships with companies that sell thermoplastic corrugated pipes. I've worked with companies that sell fractional ownership of, of private jets. I've also worked with the companies you'd expect, beers, banks, autos. You get to learn a little bit about everything in a lot of ways through um, the business that I'm in. So I've always been really grateful for that. It's always been something that you know, if curiosity becomes important to you, or if curiosity is important, if you love learning about just a bunch of different things and a bunch of different businesses, it's a great spot to be in. Um, so that's one of the best parts. Some of the others, um, it's the coolest job in the room. Now I say that the day I started at the Saints and Pelicans, I onboarded um, legitimately with our owner's new pilot. So um, that guy actually has a cool job. Um, but I, I say so often, like, and my wife gives me the hardest time about this. We can be in a room of people, Maybe we know them, maybe we don't. Inevitably, when we get to a point where we're talking about what we do professionally, the conversation always ends up veering, whether I want it to or not, um, to what I do. They want to know about what's going on with the team. They want to know, you know, the insider access. They want to know just like if we have a naming rights partner, like oh, how much are they spending on that kind of thing? Like everybody wants to, everybody's intrigued by what we do. So it becomes a fun conversation piece. Um, also, and I say this, it, it could be a girl as well, but you know, the, the phrase always got a guy. We've always got some, um, you know, if you, if your air conditioner broke down tomorrow, got a guy. If you are in the market for a new car, your car breaks down, you got a guy. If you're looking, if you're out in LA or New York or Houston or whatever, and you are trying to get tickets because you're out there to a game, 
chances are we know somebody either on the brand side or again within an organization. It's it's such an interconnected business, um, and we have an opportunity to cultivate some really meaningful relationships with awesome people again, both on the team side and with the brands we work with. And then just some of the places you get to go as part of this. I mean, I've been to NHL All Star Game. I've been to NBA All Star Game. I've been on the field at Wembley for for a football game. Um, it's it's one of those things where there's times where you just take a step back and you're like, if you were a sports fan growing up as a kid, it's like, you can't believe it, you know? So it's a really, really awesome industry to be a part of. Um, so in terms of breaking in, um, how to get in, networking, which is kind of a, a passion point of mine. Um, one, because in this business, everybody just knows everybody, but also because, you know, as I've gained more experience, I've had a lot of folks reach out um, wanting to kind of understand the path, right? And there's some, I guess, some do's and don'ts, I would say. Biggest one's establishing commonalities. Um, you know, I I say this now, you know, sitting here, but somebody tells me they're a graduate of Ohio University, a much better chance than not that I'm going to try to have that conversation with them because we have that commonality. So when you're thinking about, especially in the sports industry, who to chat to about establishing a path, about cultivating relationships, about breaking in, it's not sending out a hundred emails and saying, I'd love to find, or LinkedIn notes and saying, I'd love to find your path. It's the people that went to Tulane. It's the people that are from your hometown. It's the people that maybe work for a team that you're a huge fan of. It's creating kind of a personal interaction that will set the stage for a really positive experience for you guys and, and for them. And then what are you trying to accomplish? Um, you know, we've all been in the seat in terms of figuring out how to break into an industry. And you're in the seat you're in now, not going to have as much to offer the person who you're learning from as that person is to you. And that's okay. I've had a lot of conversations where people will ask me questions and it's like they're asking me it because they think it's the right question to ask and they don't really, the answer isn't really material to what they're trying to do in their career. Be thoughtful about what are the questions you need to ask um, and what you want to learn about somebody that's going to help advance your, your path in the industry or really any industry. Um, because again, there shouldn't be when you're having these conversations with industry professionals, there shouldn't be pretense about it. They know you, they're there to help you at this point. And when the time comes to pay it forward, you pay it forward. Um, the last thing I'd mention is gratitude, um, at risk of being the, the old man yelling at a cloud. Um, I'm surprised at how many folks reach out and we have a conversation and there's not a thank you, for it, like a note or an email or anything like that. Actually, last week we were interviewing somebody for an internship and it went well enough. And our head of HR, um, Lindley, who, who you've met, um, popped into my office the next day and asked how it went. And I was like, it went well. Um, but I was surprised, you know, no, thank you. And, and I've gotten that a fair bit as we've been through the interview process in the last couple of years. I asked her, I'm like, is that something that you've experienced too? She kind of, her eyes got big because clearly it was a passion point for her being in HR. Apparently like less than half of the people that she screens on a week in, week out basis. And she's interviewing people a lot. We'll shoot a thank you note out afterward. Easiest thing to do goes a long way. And I didn't know this was a point of differentiation, but it will differentiate. Um, and then once you get into the business, which hopefully this is something that you know, you guys take in earnest because it's just, it's such a fun business. Um, attitude's everything. There's really no job that's too small. Um, one of our interns actually just left the organization for a full-time job. And one of our Pelicans games last week, we were short staffed and I'm running around pregame, um, dropping off Smoothie King smoothies to the scorers table and logging to make sure our LEDs are running. Stuff that's largely, frankly, intern uh, work and responsibilities. But that's the business, like picking up something off the ground, like whatever it is, like there's no job that's that's too small in our business. It's extremely collaborative, which I'll get to in a second. It's also not a nine to five. Um, I would estimate that between the Saints and the Pelicans, I'll probably work an additional 35, call it nights and weekends, 35, I'll work 35 games a year in addition to my typical office responsibilities. Um, I'll, I'll, that's, and that's not including road trips. That's not including, um, you know, going out to New York and LA to see people. It's, um, it's a lot. And I say that because I love it. It's my favorite part. Being at games, going out, meeting people, being in the epicenter of where people are passionate about. It's, it's everything in this business. Um, but you got to be prepared for it, for sure. Um, I'd also encourage everybody to be collaborative. One of the best things about our end of the business is it's, we touch everything, whether that's ticket sales, public, public relations, marketing, social media. Our, our partnerships inherently involve so many different stakeholders, and that's the sports business. Everybody trying to roll in the same direction. It's no different than being on a team yourself. So 
And then finally, just being comfortable, being uncomfortable. Um, you know, we, I, as I mentioned in my career, I've been in Columbus, I've been in Jackson, Florida, and I've been down here in New Orleans. For me, that's been a privilege. Um, my wife's from Columbus, Ohio. Jacksonville it was a 10 minute walk from the beach. I was working in the NFL. It was great. And here, it would, honestly, I'm going to sell you guys. This is one of the most vibrant, unique cities in the country. So I feel privileged to be a part of that. But this job, this industry often means moving around. Um, and for some people, that's awesome. I've loved it. For some people, it's it's challenging. But it is that is inherently part of it, especially as you're moving around early on in your career. Um, in closing, these are kind of three things that my um, one of my earliest mentors when I was in media Kind of offered to me and it was very specific to the job at the time but it's a through line i've seen with most of the successful professionals i've worked alongside be curious don't assume and have the courage to make the ask so be curious the best people i've worked alongside are endlessly curious about the about things just things they don't know right so maybe they're learn, they're meeting with a company that um works in a business they haven't known much about or they are they just aren't afraid to ask questions i guess i would say you know there are a lot of people that are that they don't want to dumb or whatever like people that are endlessly curious not assuming um i can't tell you how many situations i was in early in my career where i was taking a meeting with somebody and i was like this business does it doesn't make sense or this person i'm kind of just getting through whatever i've got to get through that end up being long-lasting connections or partners of one of the teams that we're alongside so always pursue all these conversations in earnest. And then finally having the courage to make the ask, and this is personal and professional, you know, when you guys are trying to figure out what's next in your guys' career, asking for the job, asking for the opportunity, asking for who they can introduce you to, um, whether it's, you know, asking for an investment from a partner as we're pitching business, whether it's in your personal life. I mean, for me, that was, you know, asking my wife to date me and asking my wife to ultimately marry me. Um, having the courage to make the ask, and this, it, it will go a very long way. So in short, um, really proud of my path. I think, you know, it's, it's an incredible business that if you give to it, it will give you back tenfold. Um, and happy to address any questions when the time comes. So thanks for your time, guys. Thank you, gentlemen. All right. My turn, yeah. <laughs> Hi, um, how y'all doing for you gentlemen and ladies who came in? I am Arthur Ponson. I am a academic counselor in the B school. Um, the unique thing about this certificate is I actually got my undergrad in sports management. So everything these two gentlemen told y'all today, I can say because uh, I've interned in athletics and worked completely spot on. Uh, people person. No job too big, too small. So once again, I just really want to say thank you guys uh, for coming out and helping us launch this. But as you can see up here, these are the ways that these certificates, not just this one, but the other ones that aren't as cool. Yes, I said it on camera. It's cool. Joking, guys. Um, for the people at home as well, these are the ways that the certificates can help enhance you guys' futures. All right. Expand your career opportunities, of course, opening doors, the new roles and responsibilities. Always be open to listening and taking tidbits from things like this. Um, everything they've said, they've dropped a ton of gems here. Also, you will be able to go back and rewatch this as well as see those um, PowerPoint slides because we are posting this. That's why I'm talking to the people at home as well. Y'all will be the people at home too. So. All right, uh, the growth and fulfillment while pursuing this passion, because one thing, it is something you have to be passionate about. It will not be easy, as they can tell you. Some days are going to be easier than others, but that passion is what keeps you going. And you have to develop the mastery in a specialized area of interest, hone in on it, and continue to grow. Um, once you stop growing, that's when things tend to kind of become dormant. So always take something, learn from it, and see how you can better yourselves. That's now in school, once you guys leave us, get out into the industry, whatever field it may be, continue to grow and always be grateful um, for the opportunities. Embrace the culture of a lifelong learning. I want to say continue to improve. Stay abreast of the new trends and innovations. Today's trends are not going to be tomorrow's trends. Today's trends weren't yesterday's, last week's, last month's, last year's and so forth and uh, so on. It's going to continue to change and continue to evolve. Sports today and sports in 5, 10, 15 years from now are going to look completely different. 
All right. Uh, building a valuable pathway. Personal success and personal fulfillment, guys. That is what you guys make of it. What you put into this is what you're going to get out of it. But as far as the sports management certificate, these four courses are the ones that you will be taking. Um, All of y'all are familiar with the 3010s. Those are going to be you guys' prereqs that you have to take before you can even get in to the program uh, of the certificate courses. Um, This is the important slide, guys. To declare the certificates, I know uh, we've had instances in the past where you took the courses. Um, it may align so your counselor will reach out. This is something you guys are interested in. You have to meet with your uh, BSM counselor and declare it. Um, it will show up on you guys' audit. There's going to be a drop down at the top. Uh, I don't know if y'all have seen the drop down arrow. Depends on your majors, massive accounting, things like that. You drop down on that tab, you're going to click it, it's going to show. The four courses, just like the rest of your audit, the blue, green, dots of green when you've done, blue when you're in it, and red meaning, you know, you still have to take it. Uh, like I say planning with this with us is essential because not every course will be offered every semester. So it's kind of like a, when you see it, jump on it, get in it so you can knock it out and get this taken care of. Once again, the prereqs, you have to meet those. But the unique thing about these is those 12 general business electives that everybody has questions about, these can be used towards those. So you have to do those 12, might as well get something a little bit extra out of it, right? So that'll help knock those out. Good thing is, helps the general. The four courses, little room for error, but telling you guys there's something you're interested in. It's not going to feel like that extra work, that extra grind. It actually is kind of fun when you sit back and think about it. So I think everybody who gets on this path will have fun. Uh, no petitioning or substituting courses. Of course, we've had that in the past. But this is the contact information for all of us, all right? If your last name is A through E, congratulations. I'm the guy. All right? <laughs> Shoot me an email. I'm upstairs in the B school. You'll know what the Office of Undergraduate Education is. You can see my window. People knock on it and just walk in all the time. I'm always in there. If I don't have a meeting, I'm always open to talking to you guys, asking questions, anything like that, setting up meetings to help my students. But F through L-E, that would be Ms. Shira Hussein. That is her email address, shussein1 at tulane.edu. Last name's L-I through R. That would be Miss Megan St. Pierre. S. St. Pierre at Tulane.edu. And for S through Z, as well as our Altman scholars who might be interested in these programs, that will be Miss Charlotte Batiste. And she is C. Batiste at Tulane.edu. As for all of the certificates, not just the sports management, it's also the energy, the hospitality, as well as the real estate and finance and investment. All right. Now we're going to open the floor up to questions from you guys for our industry experts here. So, you guys have had to remember speak up because uh, the people at home are also going to be taking into account with you guys great questions as well as to hear the answers. All right, anybody with any questions? Yes, ma'am. This one actually goes to you, Arthur. Do you know, is there a planned out course schedule guide for those four classes? Because I know like sports marketing isn't being offered for this current fall. And some of us may be like sophomores or juniors who only really have like four more like semesters to take these courses. Right now is dependent on instructors, which is why they aren't offered everyone. But the plan is to offer them. If it's not in the fall, it will be in the spring. So it's not going to be like they're going to be two semesters concurrently that they won't happen. It's going to be a back to back. Um, But as we get more people involved, that's the goal for it to be offered semester to semester. But right now it's a every other kind of deal, but we try to change that. Every other for like all four of them, or is it a likelihood like one of them will be in the fall, one of them will be in the spring? Two and two is going to be the goal, the starter goal. They want it to two okay. and two. So most likely we'd have to take two in the same semester yes. and two in the same semester. Yes. Okay, thank you. No problem at all. Uh, any, anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Um, what would be your advice if you wanted to pursue an internship opportunity in the sports industry and how to stand out amongst other candidates? 
Um, we're, we're going through that process right now, funny enough, and, and we, it's always been rotating cast. I mean, some of it is going to be obviously the the experience that you brought to the table in terms of what you're doing differently in terms of your extracurriculars. But and everybody's different. But I've always made a great effort when it comes to internships and entry level uh, opportunities to emphasize traits. So I would say being personable, um, being prepared, um, knowing who you're going to be talking to. And again, kind of that strong follow up afterward is going to really go a long way because so much of our business is just being in rooms talking to people. You know what I mean? Like we're talking about things that you'll learn, but like so much of it is just that. So. Oh, I think he's the expert on such things. Uh, I, I get a lot of questions and I think some kind of normal insecurities from students, right? Well, I've only done this, right? I mean, like, I think for an entry level job, you're not expected to walk in with five to 10 years of experience, right? So it is, even if it's something small that you've done on campus with the athletic department or previously, think about opportunities now that you can get involved in any way from the sports industry, right? And, and then think about when you get in front of people like Justin, how do I tell this story? How do I make make the most in an honest way, right? How do I bring to light what I did do in sports? Because when you're looking at an internship or an entry level job, like you're the the margin of separation between candidates, right? You're getting people in college. They probably had some, but not a whole lot of experience. So it, it really is the little things that Justin said, and also just being prepared to tell your story, right? What makes you interested in the role, uh, and then what you've done with the expectation, right? It's not going to be a ton, but what you've done that makes you best prepared. So I know in one of the classes you talked about like doing experiential like learning, would, would that like also be within the classes of the certificate? Yeah, so our, our final project uh, in conjunction and, and just kicked off soon with the, the Sage Pelicans is that experiential learning opportunity. Yes, ma'am. I they constantly told the value of networking when it comes to um, opportunities. But a lot of the things when people talk about networking is, oh, use the connections like you already know, like talk to like your parents and the friends of your parents and all of that. Or if you're disadvantaged in that realm of networking, what are ways to compete with people who's dad is working for the Pelicans, although I want to compete for that same position. Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. And I would say, you know, networking, yeah, I mean, it, it starts with, with some people you know, but part of it, like I mentioned, um, is establishing commonalities. And the other thing is I would be well, well researched and well versed in the people that you're looking to connect with. So as you're establishing more connections on LinkedIn and most people, especially like if they know looking to get into the sports business and you're adding people in the sports business, they're, they're going to add you. If you see something that looks interesting, looks compelling, that is something that you either have thoughts on or questions on, that's going to be a really great intro because, again, I think it's much more about making it personal. So sometimes that's establishing those commonalities. Sometimes it's, I saw something of yours that resonated with me, would love to either learn a little bit more about it or chat a little bit more about it. What's your availability? Because that just doing that is going to cut you through 90% of the clutter of people who are sending notes on LinkedIn or anywhere to say, hey, Justin, um, my name's so-and-so, and I will, would love to learn your path in sports because they're sending that 100 times over. If I know there's a reason that you're looking to connect and you want to chat, that's going to break through in a way that it's just not for others. So I would keep your ear to the ground in terms of just what's going on in the industry, follow a lot of people, um, and, and leverage that to, to make it a legitimate connection. Any other questions, guys? Yes, ma'am. If you were a student now, would you pick to be in the certificate and why? I would. Um, I mean, for me, <laughs> you know, it's funny seeing my path is different than a lot of people's. Like I said, I went to school in journalism. Um, I spent three years um, getting into like in B2B sales. So there became an applicable skill set that I had. But the running joke I made with my boss, the Blue Jackets, for five plus years, because he didn't he didn't hire me. He came in about a year after I started, but became one of the closest people to me in this business. But when he the minute he started, he was very laser focused, right or wrong, on 
previous sports experience and a sports background. And my joke to him was always, you would have never hired me, even though I was at the time, you know, as the top performing seller. And we laughed about it because it was true. Like this business, um, they're real, people really do get fixated on, on sports experience. And until you're, once you're with a team, I think it's easier to move up and break in, but that is going to make a difference because I can't tell you again, just as I'm reviewing resumes for entry level jobs, for internships, how many people send resumes and it's just not applicable because it's cool to work in sports, right? They don't really think about the what, but the fact that you've demonstrated intentionality, it's something that had I known my path and known that this was what I was going to do, I definitely would have made that investment academic. Oh, yeah, I would have used this. <laughs> I was a marketing major in undergrad, and they actually started a sports marketing class. So I like, uh, I didn't actually get in. I registered, I didn't make it. And I went to the professor and like, hey, and, and got in. Don't do that. Now that's a bad example. <laughs> uh, and if they, if I could have done more classes, sports because I, I uh, showed up. To undergrad, not really you know, being a marketing major, it's something like a real job, maybe. And you know, I didn't know what I was going to do. Uh, and, and it was the way the sports marketing association, a club on campus. I got to start with that, got to start to work game nights, doing all kinds of like leading halftime uh promotions, doing PA, uh, so getting rid of green tickets, you know, anything that that and it, I just it, it, to me, it's how I kind of to start having any professional experience that kind of connected to what I was learning. So um, yeah, I, I, any opportunity to, especially where you are, right, to get experience. And experience is obviously great on campus with special sports teams, events around town, but also you can gain experience in the classroom, right? Through experiential learning, through contacts. Uh, we have uh, guest speakers that I, I record videos because we have three sections, but they're always open to people reaching out on LinkedIn. It's just taking, all of those opportunities and, and eventually, right? You might not feel it now, but eventually two or three years down the road when you've kind of determined this is the path, you, you built a pretty good resume, right? It, it only happens through that work you put in, but it'll happen quicker than you think, especially if you're enjoying it. I have to give an unbiased opinion. It is absolutely uh, a good idea. Um, I said, if I wouldn't have majored in sport management, I would have seen this and be like, hmm, this is something that would have triggered my want to learn more. And it's a way to say, you don't just get one thing. Those four courses, you get a kind of crash course in the whole. Because like I said, most people see what game day. Um, but when you did yours, what did you see? Pre-game, mm -hmm. post-game, yeah. it's tailgating, there's a breakdown. Uh, I tell people, a lot of people are like, man, I, I didn't know that happens. When you notice it happens, that's when something's going wrong. Uh, you know, a lot of times, I mean, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, guys. Um, you don't want to be seen on game days. In certain <laughs> certain jobs, that means you did your job, job excellent. Um, and this is going to be the intro in, guys. That'll get you guys just small things. And certain things you might lean to, some things you're not. That's also going to be where you... Uh, your academic counselors come in said don't email the teacher let us do that on your behalf we're your uh we're your lobbyist on your behalf <laughs> so if y'all ever have anything like that please reach out to our, your counselors that's what we're here for to advocate for you guys in classes if y'all have things questions that's what we're here for all right any other questions um, we'll do the last one. Nah, you um, is there any possibility that any of these courses are offered in the summer or ideas floating around that they possibly could be offered in the summer ideas floating uh from what we've been told they do um we haven't got a yes or a no yet but the good thing is with these being so new y'all are going to get all the informational changes in real time as soon as uh the counselors get them uh we'll get them out to you guys in a mass email to the people who are interested. So we keep you guys in the loop of saying, hey, we have this coming, so be on the lookout, or this might not be happening like we thought it would. Any changes, they let us know, and it's our job to get it to y'all as fast as we can. No problem at all, yes sir. Do you expect a data analytics course to become part of the certificate? Any clue, any? They wouldn't let me that. They would not that. I think that'd be a, a, a very great addition. And, and I, I, I'm 
speaking a little out of turn, I, I think that, that will be part of the business in sport class, not probably as all encompassing as you're thinking, but I think to some extent, the there'll be parts of that covered in that class. But I think it would be neat to have just a specific course. So um, certainly something that we can talk about. Right. That is it's an end of the business we're seeing considerable yep. then for sure. So that's a good question. Um, so I know one thing that's kind of a big uh, issue in the business school is we have so many students and uh, it's like really hard to get into classes. I know I'm a marketing major and like I, there were a bunch of classes I wanted to take. I really wanted to take the sports marketing class, but when I rolled around, like there were no seats left. And so I anticipate this program being really popular. Do you have a plan to kind of handle the demand, like maybe making it like an application or are you going to expand more sections or are we going to stop? More sections? Yes. Uh, this semester, it was kind of a soft rollout uh, is what they called it because they just wanted to see if there was a demand. And now that we do know there is a demand for this as well as other courses, it's going to be more sections. Um, once again, it's going to be something too. If you're on the wait list, reach out to one of us. Um, especially if you are in the getting towards the, the juniors and seniors, you guys reach out to, to us because that's when we can advocate to hey, we have you know, some people are going to try to take the courses um to where. They just want the 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 class, but I believe it's this is gonna be a, a different section, uh. So it's not gonna be for everyone, because uh, if, if you look, it's not gonna be that marketing and whatever the number. It's like a BSG now, so that's gonna be specific to the certificates. So no problem at all. Next question. All right, um, guys, if y'all do happen to have any questions, um, please feel free to reach out via email. Um, meet with you guys as counselors, once again, <laughs> that's what we're here for. Thank y'all for coming out. I believe we do have closing ceremony. That'll be in a few moments. So once you guys exit, y'all can go right into the uh, common area right there and if you have questions out there, we'll also be out there as well. So thank you guys for coming. Gentlemen, thank you guys. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.